The alliance of small island states, also known as EOSIS, consists of a coalition of small island and low-lying countries that share similar developmental challenges and concerns about international greenhouse mitigation. The main purpose of AOSIS is to defend island interests in the international negotiations under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, also known as the UNFCCC. AOSIS has 44 member states and observers drawn from oceans and regions around the world, such as Africa, Caribbean, the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean, the Pacific, and the South China Sea. Despite representing a number of smaller and less developed states, AOSIS has become a powerful and well-recognized key player in the UNFCCC negotiations. AOSIS was formed in 1990 under the leadership of countries such as the Maldives, Vanuatu, Trinidad, and Tombango. Initially comprised of 24 island states, AOSIS substantially grew over time. These island states recognise the need for inter-regional cooperation as their ability to exert individual economic and political out was extremely limited. IOSIS countries are united by the threat that climate change poses to their survival and frequently adopts a common stance position because of this in the negotiations. Climate change has already triggered environmental and humanitarian disasters on an unprecedented scale in many of these low-lying islands. If this trend continues, the loss of entire nations to rising sea level is a serious threat to many of these smaller islands. These low-lying states are already seriously concerned with the changes they have experienced due to climate change, including more deadly and harmful tropical cyclones, prolonged droughts and the loss of coral and mangrove ecosystems. These devastating catastrophes in ecosystem are threatening individual way of life as well as individual human security. This presents the dire need for these countries to join together to stop these environmental disasters from occurring. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change was formed in 1992 and came into force in 1994. It has a total of 194 parties to the convention plus the EU. The convention is based upon establishing long-term objective goals of stabilising greenhouse gas concentration and combating the adverse effects of climate change. In the UNFCCC framework, AOSIS functions primarily as a voice for small island states. The UNFCCC developed the legally binding treaty known as the Kyoto Protocol. Under this treaty, states are bound to admission target reductions. The protocol first commitment period state started in 2008 and ended in 2012. The second commitment period began on the 1st of January 2013 and will end in 2020. Along with many other groups, the ACES campaigned heavily for this second commitment period in which countries agreed to reduce emissions by 18% below the 1990 levels. For the survival of these small island states, cohesive action must be put in place for the negotiations of goals which reduce the threat to their existence. Already there is a threat towards state, territorial integrity, viability and sovereign rights. Scientific evidence shows that effects of human-induced climate change has accelerated the process of rising sea level and storm surges. More frequently, the extreme weather events, ocean acidification, coral bleaching and coastal erosion will only further intensify over time. Furthermore, this is impacting the nature of individual human security and causing human rights abuses in these developing countries. Climate change has already forcibly displaced people from their homes and the threat of entire islands becoming inhabitable. The objective of AOSIS aims to help bring environmental integrity to the climate change regime and help restore the confidence that something can be done to solve this global crisis in the international community. AOSIS strongly supports the need for short-term goals and concrete initiatives. This is due to the immediate effects with climate changing is posing to these states and their ability to have the advanced adaptive capacities to overcome these environmental problems. Firstly, AOSIS proposes countries need to bring their emission reduction targets in line with the latest scientific recommendations. Secondly, AOSIS proposes that participation in emission trading schemes should be limited to those countries with legally binding obligations to act. Thirdly, AOSIS calls for the second commitment period under the Kyoto Protocol to be five years in length. And finally, AOSIS calls for the urgent need for parties to resolve the problem of surplus credits in their emission trading scheme. This issue needs to be adequately dealt with, if not the possibility for countries to technically meet their obligations even as their emission rises dramatically.
Furthermore, there are commitments to formulate an agreement which aims to limit global average temperatures to well below 1.5 degrees Celsius above in pre-industrial pre levels. Furthermore, they are committed to ensuring long-term stabilisation of atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations are kept well below 350 parts per million. ASOS recognises the need for principles of common but differentiated responsibilities and include this in their negotiation practices. According to scholar Tulula Honkin, the principles of CBDR as it applies to the international environmental negotiation consist of two elements. Firstly, it requires all concerned states to participate in the international response measures aimed at addressing environmental problems. Secondly, CBDR includes the adoption and the implementation of different commitments for states, taking into account their diverse situation circumstances and capacities, their historical contribution to the problem, as well as their future developmental needs. This is further demonstrated in the UNFCCC under its principle of calling all member parties to protect the climate system. On the basis of equality and in accordance with their common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capacities. This principle was demonstrated in the Kyoto Protocol in terms of both differential response and resource redistribution. Furthermore, in terms of emission carbon reduction, the protocol took into account distinctions between industrial and developing countries, the former having binding obligations and the latter not. This is supported by ACES and their official declaration to call for the developed countries to take the lead, to undertake urgent, ambitious and decisive action to significantly reduce emissions of all greenhouse gases, including fast action strategies to support particularly of vulnerable countries in their efforts to adapt to the adverse impacts of climate change, including through the provision of increased levels of financial and technological resources. ASOS is based formally on the consultation and coordination of smaller member states. Its official focus remains on climate change negotiations, in which it achieves strong success in being a key and dominant player in the UNFCCC. While collectively this group only represents less than 1% of the world's territory and population, they are the countries which feel the most adverse effects of climate change. AOSIS represents many re remarkable accomplishments in some of the most notably being obtaining a seat on the Bureau, a position which until then had been privileged to only five UN regional groups. Furthermore, the group acquiring and maintains a position on the UNFCCC bodies, such as the Exclusive Board of Clean Developmental Mechanism, the Adaptation Fund, and the Green Climate Fund. Even though AOSIS achieves its success through acting as a strong and cohesive bloc, it is not always easy to find a common denominator through its member states. Despite their common vulnerabilities, small island states are threatened by climate change in a number of different ways. This effectively changes the state's negotiation position as they try and achieve policy decisions which suit their domestic circumstances. Countries such as Papua New Guinea have large amounts of tropical forests and are interested in compensating payments as part of RED. Others, in particular countries such as Singapore, have large harbours and therefore specifically interested in bulk fuels and maritime transport. This presents the group with social fragmentation and serious impacts to their two-level game theory. However, despite obvious tensions and overall consensus in the international community represents that ASOS is a homogenous group with little disagreement. It is through the similar developmental challenges and concerns about environmental politics which align them together as a strong, cohesive force.